The Hero of Time is one of the most well-known reincarnations of Link, but just because he is popular among fans doesn't mean that his story is the most pleasant. If we look at each of the three timelines, whether Link defeats Ganon, warns of his plans, or even dies, they all have a devastating impact on Hyrule. No matter what choice Link seems to make, doom is sure to follow. Is the Hero of Time cursed to bring evil to Hyrule? Not by his direct actions, but the consequences that follow? Join me as we uncover the mystery behind Link's curse, and how he could be seen as evil. In this theory, we will look at Link's quest through Ocarina of Time, and how his curse could have affected each of the three timelines as well as his life after the events of Majora's Mask. As a small example of Link's curse, when Link first starts his adventure in Ocarina of Time, he is an orphan of war and is looked at as different due to not having a fairy by Maida. He is shown to be suffering from nightmares foreshadowing the events to come, he is awoken by Navi, and is told he needs to save the Great Deku Tree. After summoning the courage and defeating Queen Gama, who was poisoning the Great Deku Tree, we find out that we are too late, and the Great Deku Tree ends up dying. This leads to Mido blaming Link for his death. Yeah, Link's already off to a great start, and all of this negativity could be the beginning signs of Link's curse. We know the rest of Ocarina of Time. Link ends up saving each of the races throughout Hyrule, some more than once, and rescuing their sages before finally defeating Ganondorf and saving Hyrule. Or does he? Let's start with the adult timeline. Link defeats Ganondorf, and the sages seal him in the Sacred Realm with the Triforce of Power in his possession. Link is sent back to his childhood, leaving this timeline without a hero. We later find out in The Wind Waker, Ganondorf eventually overcomes the sages' seal and attempts to take over Hyrule. But with no hero to face the evil, the goddesses flood Hyrule. After everyone Link saved, after everything Link accomplished, it was all just washed away. Though in Wind Waker, he is looked up to and legends are formed around him but most remember it as just that, a legend, and nothing more. After Ganondorf breaks free from a seal and tries taking over Hyrule again, many Hyruleans, Zoras, Grons, and other races are led to believe that their hero just abandoned them. With no one left to stop Ganondorf once and for all, they prayed to the goddesses to save them, and their prayers were met with the Great Flood. Their homes, many of their families, their entire lives were destroyed. This would lead to many resenting the hero. They would wonder what purpose Link had saving them in the first place if it would just lead to their lives being destroyed anyways. Next is the child timeline. After defeating Ganondorf, Link is returned to the moment when he first met Zelda. He warns her of Ganondorf's plans and then Link makes his way to Termina. Seems harmless enough, but let's dig a little deeper and see exactly what this caused. After Zelda is warned, Ganondorf would flee back to the Gerudo Desert to ready his army of Gerudos. The war between the Hylian army and the Gerudo army would begin. This would lead to the destruction of the entire Gerudo race. Just as with Ganondorf, they would most likely be banished to the Twilight Realm with Ganondorf or imprisoned in their own temple, which would eventually come to be known as the Arbiter's Grounds. Meanwhile, Link is on his way to Termina searching for Navi. Curiously, the Happy Mask salesman follows him for unknown reasons. This leads to Majora's Mask being stolen from him, and as we all know, the destruction of Termina. In Link's mind, he thinks he just saved Hyrule twice, once in the future as an adult, and again as a child. Now, after all of that, he is reliving the same three days over and over. He is cursed to watch not only the destruction of Termina, and possibly Hyrule by the moon falling, but he finds out that almost everyone in Termina has their own tragedy they must deal with. It is only after solving everyone's problems and simultaneously saving the four giants that he is able to stop Skull Kid and return the mask to the salesman. To make things worse, while Link is on his adventure in Termina, he doesn't know anything about the future devastation his actions in Hyrule would bring to the land that he once saved. In his mind, he thinks of himself as a hero, but in reality, Hyrule may have had the same outcome or have been even better off if he would have just done nothing. Whether it be by flood or war, Hyrule would be scarred by his heroic actions. Link's intentions were to save Hyrule before Ganondorf was able to set his plan into motion. He didn't know that one small warning would lead to such a great war. He didn't know by simply looking for his lost friend that he would ensure the doom of Termina. This leads us to the third timeline, the Downfall timeline. You would think this would be the most tragic of the timelines since Link actually dies in it, but you would be wrong. Out of all three timelines, Link dying is the best thing that could have happened for Hyrule. In both the child and adult timelines, Link causes who knows how many years of war. 
that leads to the eratification of entire races. In another timeline, the entire land is flooded and destroyed. After both of these tragic events, it is thought that Hyrule only sees a hundred years of peace before either Twilight Princess or Wind Waker occurs. However, after Link is defeated, the sealing war or imprisoning war begins which leads to Ganondorf being sealed permanently and it isn't until greedy Hylians that are searching for the Triforce for their own evil intent travel to the Sacred Realm and end up joining Ganondorf's army that he is freed. This is actually the longest of the three periods that Hyrule remains peaceful. Yes, the Hero of Time saving Hyrule as an adult and as a child both lead to worse outcomes than him dying and failing to save Hyrule. In fact, the best outcome would have came if he would have just told that annoying fairy to fuck off. This would also have the side effect of saving Terminus since he would have never left to look for Navi, which means the mask salesman would have never followed him and the Skull Kid would have never gained control of the mask. Sure, Link would have to deal with terrifying nightmares of a man he would never see, but he would never be blamed for the Great Deku Tree's death. He wouldn't have caused Hyrule to be flooded. He wouldn't have caused the destruction of the entire Gerudo race. The Twilight would have never invaded Hyrule. Yes, on his adventures, Link accomplished great things, helped and even saved hundreds of people, but is the outcome caused by the heroic actions worth it? All of the people in Termina would have never had problems that needed to be solved in the first place. They would have continued on happy. Yes, Hyrule would have been doomed, but, as we can see, no matter what Link does, horrible things always seem to follow. Even when he has the best intentions. No matter what choice Link seems to make, doom is sure to follow. So, is the Hero of Time cursed to be evil? Not by his direct actions, but the consequences that follow. Alright guys, thank you for checking out this theory. If you like this, please subscribe and thumb up. It really, really helps. You may also be interested in some of my past Zelda theories or Zelda Wii U news videos. In fact, I post a brand new Zelda theory every week, usually around Wednesdays. I also have my other series of Zelda mailbags, where myself and other popular YouTubers like McIntyre Productions, HMK, Commonwealth Realm, RMFH, Two Button Crew, Sazizi, and many others answer your Zelda questions and give out prizes like games and amiibo every week for those who get their questions answered. If you do subscribe, you'll be notified as soon as each new video goes up and you'll never have to worry about missing out on great Zelda content. Be sure to leave your thoughts on this Zelda theory below and let me know what you would like to see in a new Zelda theory. Then, check out some of my other Zelda theories or mailbacks. And as always, thank you for watching.